Okay, welcome back to Silicon Angle, Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We out, go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are here at our exclusive OpenStack Enterprise Forum put on by um, the great folks who are here in the cloud business, OpenStack business, we're excited. But all the vendors are here, SolidFire, HP, big event, SolidFire promote, put this event on, the Cube is here. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org and Silicon Angles Cube. Our next guest is Rodney Peck, who's an OpenStack cloud architect. Oh, J.C. Martin. J. C. I mean, sorry, Martin. I just had Rodney on. I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> J.C. Martin, cloud architect, eBay. We just had Rodney on, sorry about that. Um, J.C., welcome to the Cube. Thanks. So, um, what is the big deal going on with eBay and OpenStack? Take us through your implementation and what you guys have done. Sure. So, our journey to, to cloud started uh, a while back and we developed our own uh, OpenStack uh, management software. But like two years ago, we looked at the, the landscape and uh, we tried to see if there was a way to leverage uh, an open source uh, technology. We looked at various vendors or op projects like CloudStack and uh, uh, Amazon, Azure, and what we really found is that the, the community that was uh, starting to grow on OpenStack was definitely something that was appealing. So what we did is we evaluated OpenStack and started deploying it in two specific use cases. One was developer productivity, so giving developers uh, virtual machines instead of using their desktops. And this proved to be a very um, uh, popular. So today, for example, we have uh, 7,000 VMs created by developers. More than 5,000 of them are uh, using this infrastructure to innovate, build new products w without having to request new infrastructure or do some kind of uh, ticketing, uh, use some ticketing system to get uh, machines or resource. We looked also at another project which was how do we accelerate the, the time to site, uh, time to uh, release small projects that can be changing uh, user experience, some kind of experimentation project. So we developed like an internal public cloud where um, business units or developers could experiment and deploy uh, just a small application, try it out, see how it works. Sandbox. Sandbox isolated from the rest of the site, same experience that they had on public cloud, basically providing the same experience that they would get on Amazon, but on our infrastructure. So giving like the public cloud experience internally. And, and that has proven to be a, a very, uh, very popular. And at the same time on the PayPal side, they, they took OpenStack and they deployed in production OpenStack, trying to accelerate the time to deliver applications to, uh, to site. And that also has been very popular. So same time frame, two years ago, we, we took some two different paths, but right now we are looking at consolidating those two uh, tracks, if you want, into one common cloud and rip out the benefits of um, aligning and uh, sharing infrastructure. So essentially, you, you, you're duplicating the benefits of the public cloud. You talked about the Amazon public cloud, but you're doing it in-house. I think it was Chris Kemp said that every Amazon customer that he talks to knows that crossover point when bringing it in-house is going to be less expensive than, than doing it in the public cloud. I wanted to ask you as a practitioner, is, is that true? Did you have that sense? Were you guys such scale that you already felt as though bringing it in-house was more advantageous economically, or were there other factors involved? Were there other capabilities that you've been able to develop that you maybe couldn't get from the Amazon Cloud? What was the decision point there? So, we, we, we did the evaluation on how much uh, it would cost us to move to a public cloud. And uh, as Chris was saying, there's a, an inflection point where um, if you go above, uh, it's going to be much more expensive than what you would uh, get internally. So it all depends on how spiky your, your demand is, right? So for example, at eBay, we have seasonal uh, traffic around the end of the year. And um, if, we, if we look at what is our baseline traffic, and uh, we, we can move part of that uh, excess capacity to a public cloud, 
then obviously it's more interesting than moving everything because you, you have this baseline that you always uh, need that maybe you want to keep internally and uh, not pay rent on it. But for things that you need only a few times of the year, you, you, it makes sense economically to have. So do you, do you burst to the public Not cloud yet, or? but no. we are evaluating options to burst because this has an architectural uh, uh, impact, right? Applications have to be ready to burst to the cloud. So there's the, the infrastructure, so we are building the infrastructure, we are experimenting always with cloud provider to see how this would work. But we have to, so to talk to our developers and say what happens if you are on a public cloud, not in our data center. So you're talking about the user experience, recovery, backup, all the... Security, yeah, 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 latency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compliance. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we have to look at all those aspects. The technical side is That's easy. That's not a big deal. Is it all those uh, laundry yes. lists? The technical <laughs> side is easy. You know, you yeah. connect yeah, the cloud yeah, yeah, to another yeah, yeah. cloud. That's easy. JC, I want to ask you about the enterprise. Obviously tonight, it's a packed house. People online are going crazy. A lot of popularity with OpenStack. So Dave and I were commenting earlier yesterday, the hyperscale mindset's bleeding over to the enterprise fast. So you're seeing the mindset of DevOps aggressively hit the mainstream enterprise. Yeah. Why, why, why is OpenStack such a good fit there, in your opinion, given someone who's playing with it and, and deploying it? Because it's open source. So you can easily look under the hood, right? So if you are buying like a commercial product, you are in the same type of uh, model that you used to be with uh, legacy infrastructure and big vendors. With OpenStack, the, 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 admins, the, the new ad breed of uh, like DevOps administrators, they, they have the opportunity to even contribute to the software, right? They, they have a community that they can talk to when they have an issue. They, they, it's a career path also, because if you put OpenStack in your resume, you will see that you will get uh, several uh, job offers uh, per week. <laughs> uh, and uh, you put Python, OpenStack, DevOps, and, uh, and you're golden, right? So it's a career path, and uh, it's, uh, the, the community is the, the, key, uh, the key reason why I think. Uh, so you're seeing people who have OpenStack skills are getting jobs pretty fast. And we cannot hire them anymore because <laughs> they are such a big demand. Right? They are such a big demand. That's awesome, uh, Dave. I mean, Dave, what's your take on that? I what? mean, what's your view on DevOps hires in mainstream enterprise? I mean, well, I think that I mean I, DevOps. They eat glass and spit nails. Well, but I think that uh, the discussion. Actually, I thought Lydia Leong set it up well. There's two vectors in private cloud. One is extending virtualization into automation, yeah. and the other is the DevOps piece. Yeah. And I think my take on it is. If, if I'm a young developer, I want to go into the DevOps piece. Exactly. You know, yes. So that's really actually is. What kinds of what databases are you using for your OpenStack applications? One of each. Why? <laughs> All of the above? Yes. Yeah. Uh, for OpenStack itself or on OpenStack? Yeah. So uh, well, let, let's talk about the databases that you're using uh, for applications running on OpenStack. Okay. So we just recently uh, released a database as a service uh, using the Trove project from OpenStack, so we have several uh, developers that are contributors to that project. And uh, it's using MySQL uh, primarily, because mm -hmm. that's the, what was uh, the main, uh, if you want, database supported by this project. But we are actively looking at supporting NoSQL options, because we have a large community of developers that want to have MongoDB and others. Mm -hmm. So it, for us, it's uh, about giving choice to developers so that they can innovate on top of the platform. And what we have seen is that we may have started with Oracle, everybody was going to Oracle uh, database because it was the easiest for choice for them because we had support uh, from our platform directly on uh, uh, Oracle. But as we offer more choice and uh, it's easy for them to deploy their own instances, we are seeing a shift where people are now trying and developing new architectures that are supporting those new databases. So you're providing services much in the same way that AWS is providing we, services. We are trying you got to. A, we are you got a relational to. database, you got plans for NoSQL, you got, yes. you got Oracle. We have, the, in fact, our developers, they, they, as uh, someone else was saying, they, they, they were raised with the public cloud. They know services that are in AWS and they are expecting the same things from us. Last question, what's your next uh, OpenStack project? Next OpenStack, we have many of those. Uh, we are trying to push for better load balancer as a service, firewall as a service. We are contributing into Solom, platform as a service, uh, pushed by Rackspace, and we hope that this is going to be one of the, 
the OpenStack project, moving up the stack from infrastructure as a service to platform. Awesome, JC, thanks very much. Appreciate well, you coming okay. on. Thanks for coming on, JC, we really appreciate it. Uh, we love the commentary, OpenStack is the future for the enterprise. You can look under the hood. That by itself is uh, the table stakes for enterprises. And by the way, customization, Lego blocks, however you want to look at it, whatever your description, open source, looking under the hood. At the end of the day, something has to be supported and that's what people want. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.